I live in the Canadian province of Ontario. Here, liquor stores are a provincial government enterprise reporting to the Minister of Finance. So, when a labor dispute threatens the availability of hard liquor, it's not exactly happy hour. I'm Larry Fedorik, and this is Later That Same Life. On each episode of my weekly podcast, a different topic, discussion, or story from our lives. Season 13, Chapter 9. It's only booze. The system of getting beer, wine, and spirits here in Canada's largest province is complicated. All over the map. More of that specifically a little later on in the podcast. There is no federal structure for Canadians to get booze. The business models vary province to province. As a nation, we generally agree on the rules surrounding being drunk, but the ability to get drunk is different as you go across country. If you look around the world, national governments are not involved in liquor laws. Well, except France, where drinking wine is mandatory at age 16. The United States once attempted a nationwide law, prohibition. It was the 18th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, ratified in 1919. No alcohol. It's against the law. Hey, I just got home from fighting for my country overseas in the great World War I. Can I get a shot of bourbon? What? Why? Since when? Prohibition. All alcohol products. You couldn't make it. You couldn't sell it. You couldn't even possess it. And they somehow managed to maintain this regulation for well over a decade. Despite these rules, they still had the Roaring Twenties. Speakeasies, gin joints, rum runners, moonshiners, bootleggers. The moonshiners and bootleggers? They souped up their cars to outrun the revenuers. Eventually, they would also race these cars against each other, creating an auto culture that became NASCAR. True story. Now a $4 billion annual industry has its roots in the booze laws. Finally, in 1933, the 21st Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, repealing the 18th. Go ahead and drink already. Apparently we couldn't stop you anyway, so it's legal again. Everybody raised their glass, and we went into a Great Depression. Coincidence? Who knows? So in the U.S. now, liquor laws, you know, availability, bar hours, legal age, etc., they will vary state to state, sometimes county to county. They still have a few dry counties. In Canada, it is slightly different province to province. Generally, in most provinces, buying liquor is a combination of government and private interests, except in Quebec, where drinking, along with smoking, is mandatory at age 16. When I was growing up in Saskatchewan, they had something called off-sale, Off-sale was the ability to buy a case, or five, of uh, beer at the hotel pub. The hotel pub was mostly where you bought your cold beer. What a system. You could sit down and have a cold beer while buying some cold beer for later. In Ontario, for years and years, we had two main selections. The liquor store for wine and spirits and the beer store for beer. The beer store used to be called Brewer's Retail, but nobody actually called it that. They called it the beer store. So eventually, they just changed their name. The liquor store could sell beer, but only in six packs and not refrigerated. Liquor stores in Ontario are run by the LCBO, the Liquor Control Board of Ontario. Again, a government enterprise reporting to the Minister of Finance. We here refer to the liquor store as the liquor store, the LCBO, or Lickbo. Oh yes, we actually use the term Lickbo, some of us. It remains the only legal place in Ontario to buy bottles of spirits. It was only in the last 20 years or so that rules started to change. Liquor stores were allowed refrigeration, 
About 10 years ago, grocery stores were allowed to sell beer and wine. We still have beer stores, but fewer and fewer as a result of the new rules. Back to its roots, remember it was called the Brewer's Retail? Well, that's because it was, and is, owned by the three biggest breweries in Canada. These breweries, though, have all been bought up by foreign interests. A lot of our beer money leaves the country. Recently, Ontario Premier Doug Ford pushed up his plan to allow convenience stores to sell beer, wine, and ready-made cocktails. Originally planned for a couple of years from now, Ford suddenly said that convenience stores will be able to sell limited liquor by September of 2024, just in time for school. And Ford gave the big breweries 225 million Ontario taxpayer dollars to compensate them for their loss. He also said that beer stores could uh, begin to sell lottery tickets. I found out recently that they already had the ability to sell some minor grocery products. Yeah, if convenience stores can sell beer, just make the beer stores convenience stores. Why shouldn't I be able to buy my beer and my pretzels in one place? By the way, the Doug Ford slogan is, For the people. But he only ever says that first part. The entire slogan is, Doug Ford, For the people. Who can do the most good for Doug Ford and certain friends. Well, it's the people. That's what gets me up every single morning. Really busy, busy. And that's what I'm here for. To listen and to do what we can to try to help the people. You can't always get it right. And let me tell you, when I don't, I hear from the people. Getting it done for the people. Well, it's the people. The people. 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 So beer and wine at the grocery stores. Soon at convenience stores. Also, if I have a winery... I can set up a little store and sell my wine there. If I have a craft brewery, I can set up a little pub in a store and sell my beer there. But if I make vodka, I gotta go through the Liquor Control Board of Ontario, the LCBO, LICBO. The LCBO also sells liquor and wine to restaurants and bars in the province. If I'm the keg in Ontario, I can't buy my rye from Seagram's. I have to buy it from the LCBO. Approximately one-third of Canadians live here in Ontario, and many of them enjoy a cocktail. As a result, the LCBO, i.e. the Government of Ontario, is one of the largest purchasers of wine and spirits in the world. According to their own 2023 annual report, 1.1 billion liters of beverage alcohol was sold last year by the LICBO. Here's a quote from their annual report of last year, quote, record dividend of $2.58 billion back to the government of Ontario to support critical services like health care, education, and infrastructure, unquote. $2.58 billion in dividends based on about $7.4 billion in total sales. That's right, liquor sales help health care. Why are there long wait times at the emergency room at hospitals? Why are some hospital emergency rooms forced to shut down? I guess in Ontario, we're just not drinking enough. Education. Hey, Dad, my school needs a new computer. All right, all right, I'm doing my part. I'm going to get some Jack Daniels right now. The Ontario government is in the booze business, and it's profitable. This, of course, puts them in tenuous situations. For example, five times a year, they put out a very glossy magazine. It's called Food and Drink, Spring, Summer, Autumn, Winter, and Holiday. It's distributed through the liquor stores, free to customers. Beauty shots of booze next to beauty shots of food, followed by even more beauty shots of booze. It's promoting booze sales. Why? There's no competition. Everybody knows where to get booze in Ontario, the LCBO. It's the only place. So really, the magazine is just promoting greater consumption of booze. My government is encouraging me to drink more. Yeah, you don't have to do that. 
Your other policies are already enough to drive me to drink. And of course, they always say they promote responsibility. Have you seen any of those tiny little notices in hard-to-see places around the liquor store? Often the image is a set of car keys in a martini glass with a red circle around it and a big red line through it. Ah, yes, yes, do not under any circumstances ever put your car keys in a martini glass. Ah, uh-huh, I get it. And they don't even say, don't drink and drive. You know what they say? Please drink responsibly. Break that down for a second. Please drink. Please drink. Please drink responsibly. Please drink. They also claim to support charities and local diversity to the tune of $14.6 million annually. Let's see, $14 million, based on revenue of $7.5 billion. Wow, how generous. A few years ago, they erected a new state-of-the-art LCBO building at my mall across the street. A huge standalone structure that blocks the sun. I kind of watched it go up. One day I was walking by, and I noticed the doors were open, and there were cars parked all around it. Ah, it must be open, I thought to myself. It was not only just cars parked around it, it was hard not to notice that it was Mercedes, Jag, uh, Porsche, Jag, Mercedes, Lexus, Mercedes. These were the LCBO executives who were there for the grand opening. That's anecdotal, I realize, but there's a lot of money in booze in Ontario. Many people do really well by it. Well, not the charities and not, uh, apparently, the employees. So back to where we started this podcast today. A labor dispute, a strike, by LCBO employees in Ontario. Stock up, they said, previous to walking out. At the recording and posting of this podcast, I'm not able to say exactly where we'll be at once you hear it. This is the first strike they've ever had, but not the first time they've threatened one. And every time this happens... All these issues are re-raised. Why is the government in the booze business? Why do they regulate booze? What kind of employer are they? And so on. The LCBO employs about 11,000 people. Estimates are as high as 70% are part-time. It's the old part-time scam. A lot of big, heartless corporations do it. But our own government? Well, it's the people. And not just Doug Ford. All the governments over the decades. Part-time. A company doesn't have to pay for part-time employees' benefits or contribute to a pension. They control the amount of hours that you get, where you get to work, and you can't get too many hours because then you could make a case for being full-time. So just when you were starting to do really well, they often just cut back on your hours. Really busy, busy. Morning to night. The unionized employees are just tired of it. They want more control, better pay, and they are worried that Doug Ford's inexplicable drive to get more booze into more corner stores will hurt the LCBO business in the long run. Well, it's the people. So the only place to buy liquor is closed due to a strike. Again, we do have the grocery stores, the wine stores, the beer stores, the bars and the restaurants will still have booze. The union of LCBO workers has promised to minimize the effect on the bars and restaurants, trying not to hurt their economy. You know, between 30 and 60 percent of a restaurant's revenue can come from alcohol sales. So even during the liquor store strike, there's lots of places to get booze. Plus, all the weed stores are still open, if that is your mood-altering preference. But the liquor stores closed. So if I want a martini in my living room or a rum and coke in my backyard, sorry, store is closed. You should have stocked up like we told you. I tend to almost always side with labor. I never trust big corporate to do anything fair for the employee. And the LCBO is big corporate. It's just run by a provincial government. The Minister of Finance. Congratulations, Minister. You're in charge of our economy and our budgets. Oh, and booze. And of course, this government. I don't trust Doug Ford to do anything good for anybody who isn't Doug Ford. 
or select friends. Well, it's the people. So we'll see how long this liquor store strike goes. As I said, it all may be over by the time you're hearing this. I'm not a teetotaler. I love a nice chilled martini. But otherwise, availability of hard liquor doesn't really affect me that much day to day. Incidentally, the term teetotaler? Nothing to do with the beverage tea. It's actually spelled T-E-E, totaler, coined in the 1830s by a man named Richard Turner. You see, back then, some people abstained from whiskey and the hard stuff, but uh, enjoyed their beer, wine, or cider. Turner advocated for a total abstinence. Tea, total, to emphasize total. It's like someone saying to you, uh, hey, you're in trouble, mister, and I mean trouble with a capital T. That's where it comes from. Do you abstain? Total. T total? Yes, T total. Total abstinence became T totalers. And now a part of your brain that should be occupied with some helpful information is instead filled with some useless trivia. You're welcome. Many, many years ago when I lived in Winnipeg, the provincial liquor stores had a strike. It lasted quite a while. I guess they couldn't deem it an essential service. After a time, they took to opening one or two liquor stores somewhere in the city for a few hours a day as a show of goodwill. People lined up those and uh, picked up their various bottles. One day I found myself in one of those lines. There was this old man in front of me. He was breathing heavy, unsteady on his feet. Looked pretty rough, actually. After about an hour, the old guy just sat on the ground, rolled up his pant legs, undid two prosthetic limbs just below the knee and proceeded to massage his stumps for about 10 minutes. Then he reattached them, rolled down his pant legs and stood up and got right back in line. This happened. I remember thinking, wow, that is dedication or uh, addiction or something. So now anytime there's a labor dispute involving uh, liquor stores, I think of that moment and that man. The LCBO and the way liquor is distributed and sold in this province has been an issue ever since I moved here about 40 years ago. It comes and goes. And again now, as a result of this latest situation, we're talking about it once more. People have strong opinions. And then things go back to normal. We have a few seven and sevens. And we forget that we cared. Ontario has a long history with the temperance movement. We did have prohibition around the same time America did. The Temperance Act of Ontario passed in 1916. Prohibition lasted until 1927, and we didn't even get a car racing series out of it. Somehow the temperance influence has lasted all these generations. Every time we discuss liquor, people always go, well, you know, there was a strong temperance movement here. Yeah, that was like a hundred years ago. Come on. Temperance. It was one of the early women's movements. Lips that touch liquor shall never touch mine. Oh, so what, we're going to skip kissing and go directly to the intercourse? Or what am I missing here? Because I'm just, just asking, just making sure everything is consensual. Should the government be in the liquor business? Well, in one way, why shouldn't it? It's booze, joy juice, the sauce. Shouldn't it be a little more regulated than coffee, tea, and Pepsi? What good would come from privatizing it? As I said, the government makes two and a half billion dollars a year from it. Why would you give that up just to have Bob's Liquor Store on one corner and uh, Emerald's Booze Emporium on the other? LCBO is a huge purchaser of liquor, and at that volume, they get deals. As the biggest purchaser of liquor in Canada, it's why, generally, hard liquor prices in Ontario are cheaper than in other parts of the country. LCBO sell many brands of cold beer, great selection of wines, they have extended hours, they're open Sundays, convenience, price, selection. Would privatization improve any of that? Of all the human rights threatened by conservative governments, what is it about the availability of booze that seems to get a discussion going? Well, it's the people. It's only booze. We have a system here and it works. There's booze everywhere. Just shut up and drink responsibly. 
And this is really the point. You know, I don't have a side in this other than I wish they were a better employer. After that, it's only booze. I can't figure out why Doug Ford is in such a hurry to make it easier for Ontarians to buy booze when it's already pretty easy, easier than it is to find a family doctor. People are waiting 8, 10, 15 hours just to see even a nurse at an emergency room. But if you want a can of Mike's Hard Lemonade, no waiting. Thanks, Doug. You can't always get it right. I live across from a small, small strip mall. But this fall, even that mall will have three different places where I can buy booze. It also has a small little drugstore where you have to wait 20 minutes to get a prescription filled. But there'll be booze everywhere. Sometimes, sure, the laws feel a little too temperance, a little antiquated, out of date. But on the other hand, let me repeat, it's only booze. If the only way Doug Ford feels he can get elected is by medicating the proletariat and putting liquor sales ahead of health care and education, then that's the way it's going to be. Please govern. Responsibly. Later That Same Life is written, voiced, and produced by Larry Fedoric. LarryFedoric37 at gmail.com If there's anything else I can help you with, don't hesitate to reach out. Subscribe to Larry's podcast YouTube channel. Get automatic notifications with each new episode. 